Assalamu alaikum everyone, Jesse here with Canadian Islamic Wealth. Last week on the Joe Rogan podcast, he had a guest on Robert Kennedy. Positions in the first place. Why, how did you adopt these, these opinions that people find so controversial? Who is running to become president of the United States. And within that podcast, they talked a great deal about the pharmaceutical industry and how some of the vaccines and treatments and different things that, like that out there are causing problems in children. As it turns out, they were all the mothers of intellectually disabled children, and they believed that their children had been injured by the vaccines, by mercury in the vaccines. Now, I'm no medical expert. I don't know anything about that whatsoever, and I don't know if this guy's right or if he's wrong or whatever. So this brings up a really interesting point of discussion when it comes to Islamic finance and investing, that if a company which is known to be halal through many metrics, right? It's making its money from a halal source, which is the sale of and treatment of different types of medicines. And everything about that company is halal, right? They don't have too much debt. But then we hear things like this, where they are perhaps not doing their proper due diligence or not disclosing to the public that their products are safe. Is it still halal for us to invest in? I'm going to be getting into that in this video, but just one second, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our Umrah trip. We are giving away a trip to Umrah to somebody in the year 2024. We just need you to do two things. Number one, I need you to subscribe to this channel, show us some love. Number two, I need you to click the link below and enter yourself into the Umrah draw. <laughs> So I guess the first thing to note about this entire thing is that we need to look at business ethics when it comes to Islam. One of the first things that we need to understand is that you can't just make money by deceptive practices. I use trickery and deceit. There is a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he's with a man and he finds out that the man is putting his best dates at the top of the barrel while having worse poorer stock at the bottom to deceive the people who is buying and selling from him to think that all of his dates are of this quality and that this type of thing was not allowed. Within the medical industry, if there is a pharmaceutical company or a pharmaceutical fund or ETF and the companies within those funds or ETFs are using deceptive practices in order to sell their different types of medicines, this would be no different. The problem is actually examining this from a practical perspective, right? The grand majority of us are not doctors, aren't researchers in this type of thing. So unless there is some type of public long-term study that's been done and verified by a bunch of different groups and bodies of research, it's really hard to determine whether or not the sale they're actually making is halal or haram. If they're selling a certain type of medicine and it comes with these side effects and they're kind of covering up something, you know, at the time, where it might be, you might be suspected of doing something that's not halal, it's not in and of itself haram yet to invest in a company like this. Only when those practices are proven to be deceptive that at that point it would become necessary on us as Muslims to get rid of investments that are like that. But then it becomes a question of, yes, they did this in the past. They, you know, did what the law of the land what the law says they should do in order to uh, pay reparations to the damaged parties, and they haven't done it since. So then it becomes a question of what to do next, right? Let's say this company has been proven to have done something deceptive in the past to say that their medicine has been bad, but then they've been found out the parties who were responsible for this deception have been fired. They've made their amends through the eyes of the law in the land in which they live in. And so now what happens, right? Can you now go ahead and invest in that? It's a really interesting discussion and a really interesting debate. And I don't know what the complete answer would be. All I would say is that another piece of advice that the Prophet وسلم, gives us is that a believer is not stung from the same hole twice. And so if we come across a company that's had these type of deceptive practices, they've had lawsuits against them. And if you look at all the companies in some of these, some of these healthcare mutual funds and some of these healthcare ETFs, of course they are registered as halal to invest in, but they've had some issues. Look at Johnson & Johnson, look at Pfizer, look at Moderna, look at all of these ones. They've all had lawsuits against them for some of the treatments that they've had causing problems with certain individuals, right? And so the question becomes, is this something that we can continuously invest in? Because we know they've had these problems in the past. You have another argument, which is, okay, so this company over here had one medicine that cause problems, right? And so this company or that company 
was inside this particular ETF, but then it's a gigantic company and it has multiple different types of medicines and treatments for various types of things, whether it's cancer, whether it's diabetes, whatever the case may be. And so then you look and you see, okay, well, the grand majority of their revenue comes from things where there weren't any issues, but there were certain issues with this particular type of vaccine or this particular type of uh, this particular type of treatment, and those were the ones that caused the problems. And so then you kind of look, have to look and say, okay, well, where do they make most of their money? This was just a small fraction. There are so many moving factors. And I would love to hear your opinion and the opinions of scholars. Please comment below what you think that if a company or a fund contains a bunch of different pharmaceutical companies that have proven, been proven by law at one point or another to have done things that are not halal, that are deceptive, have uh, problems with their treatments that cause adverse side effects, and they didn't disclose that to the public, is this something that you can invest in? And what is the, the cutoff line for that? Because certainly the healthcare sector as a whole is halal for Muslims to invest in, but some of the biggest players in that healthcare sector that can create the most amount of value and the most growth inside client portfolios have had certain issues in the past when it comes to their vaccines, when it comes to their treatments, when it comes to lawsuits, when it comes to legal action. You know, overall these medicines are doing better for the grand majority of people, but there are a few side effects here and there, but overall the, the, the needle is moving in a positive direction where people are healthier. But I definitely think it's something that we need to keep in mind when it comes to investing in healthcare. Another question worth considering is how deep does our responsibility go as Muslims? We can't control everything. We can't control what other people do with their money. And we certainly can't control if we don't have the, the knowledge. And this is something that's really common. So having a look and seeing whether or not that these type of investments actually contain problematic ethical issues inside them is something that's really hard for us to find out and figure out. And so if you look at mutual funds, ETFs that contain things like Pfizer, Moderna, uh, Johnson & Johnson that have had some issues in the past, the question becomes, okay, at what point are we responsible as investors? At what point does blame fall on us for investing in companies such as those? And is it still hard on for us to hold companies like that if they've paid their debt to society? Uh, if they've made things right from a legal perspective, because ultimately healthcare as a sector is halal for Muslims to invest in. The companies perhaps meet all the halal criteria out there, but then there are these headlines and these ethical issues that come up as a Muslim where you can't use deceptive marketing practices. And so I guess the question becomes, how much of a factor does that play in the overall growth and profitability of that company? And whether or not from an Islamic perspective, you're still comfortable investing in that. Please make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. Your support is really appreciated. Jazakallah khair, salam alaykum.